Sounds great. Well, my little friend, Quinks here, <gasps> loves Team Spirit Naruto and running in. So we are going to go with Spirit, and we are going to go to the game. But first, let me introduce our wonderful casters. Yeah, thank you, Slacks, and thank you, Quinx, as we are here with Vici Gaming against Team Spirit. Vici with a lot of team fight, a lot of long cooldowns to play around with, and Team Spirit with some good aggressive heroes, of course. Yeah, this uh, Doom, I really like it as a last pick, uh, something that uh, Eleven played uh, really well. I've seen it uh, quite a lot, especially in the Southeast Asia region as well, where the hero takes over. It's a bit of a slow build up until you get online, going Hand of Midas into a Blink Dagger or a BKB. And then uh, going for Shiva's Guard, Refresher, you kill the sec third Roche, possibly get the Refresher. S suddenly you have uh, three Dooms. Uh, I think Cinder had a great point about how they need to not misuse their abilities. Uh, Mortimer's Kisses, ton of damage. They have a great setup uh, and also Faceless Void. I like Lash Rack. I've been thinking quite a lot, like how to deal damage because Vyvern is super popular. Yes. During this Cold Embrace, like what is the best ability? I think Lash Rack is the answer. I think Lash Rack deals the most damage uh, while you're sitting there, not being able to do anything. Yeah, and if you do have this tempo lineup as Team Spirit do, gives you that tower push as well, able to take control of the map a little better while Spectre is you know, back in that pocket of farm that's guarded by the rest of your heroes. As we do see there, Yatsuro on the Spectre. Toronto, Tokyo, Leshrak. Going to be coming into their lanes, already guarding this area, trying to spot out if anyone's come in for any early observer wards or vision, but there's already a Dire Ward there, which I'm not sure they're aware of. The battle begins. Does spot out the Spectre. The incoming Team Spirit. Already bullied back by Vici Gaming, who brought the numbers. A 4v3, not a fight that the Radiant could take. And it seems like Poyo also grabbed one of the bounty runes up top as well. So a 3 to 1 going the way of Vici Gaming already. Not what we usually see. Most of the time, it's just uh, you and two being picked up. So Phoenix Mars, the old school combo. The they don't have the best egg hitters, except for that Snapfire, which is gonna be pain in the ass. Uh, little Shredder level, like once, uh, you don't even have to max it out, because it's always, one. yeah, it's just one point is enough uh, to kill the level one egg. So Phoenix needs to be careful. You have way of protecting the egg with the Mars Arena. We see DY on the top lane, two, Birds fighting against each other. I know what you love to call them. It's uh, Zapdos and no. Articuno. No, it's Moltres. It's Moltres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zapdos, yeah, is, Zapdos the is the one. lightning one. My need, bad. We need like a Visage Arcana or something, you know, to, to make sure we get that lightning bird in here. No oh, DMCA, please. And yeah, that, that poor Phoenix in zone back by DY. Mirror stuck at level one. Down bottom there, we see Yatoro. Spectre backed up by, a fe uh, by a, an Oracle here. So they're going to have that double healing strat as we do get into that mid game. But in, in the laning stage, you know, Oracle very reliant on hitting level 3 to actually have any real kill threat. For the most part, this is just get farm on Spectre, weather the storm, and make sure that PYW and Old 11 don't get too many kills down here. It's really not a killer lane. Uh, you have a Doom. He sometimes deals more damage than you expect uh, if it's a 1-2, uh, like, 1 build. Uh, but Scorch Earth, uh, yeah, I, I think they should be fine. Spectre yeah. needs to be, you know, maybe careful with the positioning. You still have Oracle. Oracle definitely needs to bring uh, a healing self to the bottom lane just to have that, like, instant uh, heal if they bring him down low enough. Meanwhile, on the mid lane, Dragonite just doing uh, Dragonite things. Yeah, Can't it's... really touch him. Uh, very hard to... Harass, two points in Dragon Blood, eight HP region, and what is he? six armor. He's about a wave ahead of the Lashrak here, right? 11-2 up against that 7-2 with both waves still alive in that mid lane. So already, already off to a good start. Lashrak gonna have to bring out an additional regen there just to keep that lane sustained going. And it's quite similar on both sides. You know, this Wyvern Void lane in regards of that kind of static healing lane, similar to that Oracle Spectre. Not too much kill threat there. Feels like both teams just want to look towards that mid-game timing. You know, 15 minutes in, that's when we're going to start to see people pushing out. I thought you were going to say 15 minutes in, we're going to see a first blood, because right now no be. one is uh, playing aggressive. Might honestly go that way, like first chrono with kisses, <laughs> 12 minutes into the game. Mira, the sound stick and fairy fire, tons of burst regen there for the Phoenix. Definitely fine to get away from DY. 
Toronto Tokyo on the Midland. I think I'm gonna be saying a lot of Toronto Tokyo because I love the nickname, best oh, nickname. Exactly. We've seen in a while. Oh, yo, yo. Yeah, he's already used his time walk. A good bit of damage from Collapse, but the turnaround battle there. Poyo secures the first blood onto the Mars, and DY chipping away at Mira. So two birds left flying. That was close. Faceless Void uh, got the XP for that one. Mars uh, didn't, unfortunately, but uh, all good. At least Phoenix picked up uh, some solo experience, has a level 2 Fire Spirit. Man, don't slow down that, that Void's farm as well. Stuck down at 9 CS while the Spectre continues free farming. Another aspect there you've got to consider when a, and when a carry hero dies. It's also that period of the game where they're not hitting creeps, they're not accelerating. We do lose Mira top. Poyo respawns and comes straight back for a kill. 1-1-1 one, one, one build on Faceless Void is extremely powerful where you have overtime damage and uh, like they're super slow, so you can get some bashes in. I want to see if he puts another point in a time walk. I prefer that considering the amount of damage that they have, especially the overtime damage coming out from the Phoenix. He puts another point in time lock, more... More damage. More damage, yeah, means uh, you can get more kills. Makes sense. <laughs> more damage, good Lacoste. And Collapse still having a real good time up top, though. Top CS of his team. And we do like to see that from these action-creating offlaners. Something that I, I feel like Nigma were doing quite a lot as well was, you know, sacking... Oh, Yatoro. He's going to walk this one off, isn't he? PYW can't close the gap. Yeah, Enigma kind of almost sacking their safe lane at RTW and giving much more of a, a good early game to their... They're chaos creators, they're playmakers. Miracle and mind control, of course. And it, it feels like a similar thing here from both teams. Yeah, that, that seems to be the great way to play Dota right now, where you're... If you have a hero that can go to jungle and just get a lot of farm there while you're playing with the four other heroes, feels really good. Enigma. They made it uh, so far look great. Caught. Very nice. Rotation to the mid lane. Dragonite with the first uh, Dragon Form. We'll put some pressure on the tower. We can see PYW lurking mid. around. Oh, they want to try and kill Toronto Tokyo. Good with a catapult wave here as He's well. He's still yeah. five. Needs one more CS for level six. And there we go. Let's hit level six. And we Radiant do have to wonder if there'll be any rotation in here. They glyph up after the little shredder. So that minus armor not going to get too much effectiveness. Or he's still launching those corrosive projectiles towards the objective, though. VG Gaming do force a rotation out of the Oracle. Spotted under Dire Vision, and that's why PYW here is going to back up, get a couple of bounty runes, maybe stack some camps as well. On the Poshka, out of lane, not really with any job to do. They're on to Tokyo. 1-3-1 build. I think he understands that there is no point in putting um, like more multiple oh, points in Lightning right Storm. Here. Dragonite can't be harassed. He's just going to outregion anything you do to him. So puts another point in Edict. If he decides to rotate, if Dragonite leaves the lane, the towers will fall. Ooh, the body blocks on the Akati. Trying to keep it alive for as long as they can, but it gets under tower range anyway. Good attempt. You see the nice little idea there from them. It's top lane. Arctic Burn, Splinter Blast, slows Collapse down, and the time dilation really a, a, nu a real nuisance there for the Mars. I do leave this bottom lane in a 1v1 where Old Eleven pretty happy just to continue farming and denying away against the Spectre. They can afford to do that because Doom, he gets Magic Wand, he gets Face Boots. Pretty speedy, hard to take down, especially when it's Spectre. She doesn't provide you with uh, much damage early on, so you want to get to Doom those levels, get him faster to level 6. After you get it, uh, you can make a rotation. If Doom gets level 6 faster than Spectre, Spectre should die on the bottom. Especially if you see, like, Leshrac showing on the mid lane with uh, no mana, then it's time to go. And going at the hand of Midas, the uh, build that we mentioned, yeah. just... Uh, first, when I saw it, I really did not like it. I thought it was a bit too slow, That's but then I saw multiple dudes just taking over the game once they get the, to that mid-game. The hero scales well into the late game. Extra gold from Devour. Top lane. Uh, he's, he's so tanky with raindrops and 17 one charges. Poyo actually just turning to hit Collapse after that Spear Sunray. Might go again for round two in a few seconds as Collapse gets his cooldowns back. But DY's arrival means that Mira Taking some heavy hits from the Arctic Burn. And a cold embrace will keep Poyo very safely in that lane. Gather up the creeps under his tower. Yeah, Toro sees Dooms. It's level 6. Instantly falls back to jungle. Does not wanna, yeah, yeah, he does not want to be Radiant's that uh, first the Doom target, attack. for sure. And they realize PYW in the mid lane again. Wants to get that little shredder with the second dragon form. 
no catapult this time, and a fortune's end. Okay, put on to himself, Nabojka. Doesn't catch out the snap fire, and that split earth misses. So they completely miss out on their opportunity to kill off the snap or the DK, but they do defend their objective at least, guarding that tier one mid. A lot of time used Spectre right now in the mid lane. She's not gonna feel safe there unless she has a hero sitting behind her. Miposhka is there, ready to purge off the haste. And gets rid of it, stops PYW in his tracks. There's this brute force attempt from VG almost into this mid tier one. Dragon form still going for another 10 seconds or so. Look at that, D wards. Four of them removed out by VG Gaming. Radiance Very limited vision for that Radiant team. That was a good nice. deny. Radiance Sub gold tower. secured for the team. Attack. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, 11 as a doom. Like, not the hero that deals uh, most tower damage, but he is dragging the creep waves, Bounty. putting some pressure on the tower. Every single time I see a Dragonite, I feel like you can push two towers at once. Yeah, because you, you soak up all of that. That focus from the enemy team, thinking we've got to stop the DK, we've got to make sure that he doesn't get a free tower. He gets it anyway, and yeah, Doom able to shove that bot lane as well, and he's got his hand on Midas very soon. And they're not having the same struggles they had against Team Nigma with this almost exact same kind of lineup, right? Where they got run over in 18 minutes or whatever it was. They have managed to get through the laning stage, not bleed out. They've got stacks ready to be farmed up. And Devour level 4 means Old Levin's going to stay top of the net worth for the, pretty much the entirety of this game now. He's the real carry. Oyo and that DK for Ori, second and third fiddle, pretty much. And they don't have a real counterplay to Doom. There is nothing to really, like, reset the fight. Their best option is, like, Oracle using ulti. Possible, trap them with the Reno of Blood. But when it comes to the late game, they're going to be BKB, so the chase potential is going to be there. Yeah, I guess the good side is Last Track, if he's got his spells on already and gets doomed, he's still going to be doing damage. Spectre, kind of a similar story as well, right? Oh. So we'll go for that tier one top. I mean, yeah. Farming a big stack in the jungle, like Last Track could have potentially invaded that. This is where Dire Last Track. The Chrono. Chrono. Yeah, BG defending that top tower. They catch out the Lash inside the Chrono with the Mars Arena and the defense of the Lash. Turn around with a Cold Embrace there, healing him up. <laughs> Looks like he's tanky enough for the first damage from that Purifying Flames and the Pulse Nova finally bring him down. He won't W. Takes the Lash Track in that one for one. Trained of the mid laners. Good dodge on the cookie by Collapse as well. BYW. We track back here. There's Dr. Duke and the Spear. Fortune's end and the Horn comes in. They do try and throw the Doom towards them. The kiss is cancelled out though, and this spectral horn causing some severe issues here. Still holding Doom. Doesn't get a target to go on. Oh, which gaming supports were both level 5 there, so there is no curse. There is no Mortimer's kisses. Not enough damage to take a fight. We can see the lack of damage inside the Chronosphere. A Doom was also not there. My man, old 11, prioritizing creeps over the helping the team. I respect that. Radiant's you know, there, there's a reason why he has 6.5k net worth 11 top minutes top in. And Devout. There we go. Centaur grabbed up. So he's going to have Blink War Stomp ready. What, 12 minutes in? Less, less than. 11 and a half minutes in. 1300 HP. He's going to be level 10 soon. This is his timing. Yeah. 11. Like 11 minutes in. He's ready to go. Blink Dagger, Hand of Midas, Face Boots. I don't know where he's getting the gold from. Uh, was not involved in a single kill. But uh, yeah, this is going to be such a great Doom game. Well, I talked about that they don't have a real counterplay to Doom. Usually we see heroes like Centaur that uses Stampede. So he needs to be prioritized. Same go for, goes for the Darkseer. If you Doom someone else, there's going to be a Surge. Runs away from the team fight. And Team Spirit still need a bit more time. You know, they... they not really hitting their timings just yet in comparison to that Doombringer. Spectre. Still needs to pick up her items as that's the jump hold 11. Gets it off onto the Lash Rack. A curse even going to hold him in place as well. The False Promise. Very unlikely to keep this Lash alive through all of this burst damage. Oh my god, he still had, what, 300 HP remaining and a deny? Miposhka with a slide deny coming out of the Arena Spear. Supernova in the back. They burst through PYW. Team Spirit. They've turned this one right on his head. Collapse. He wants a little bit more here, but Oracle jumped on by old 11. The Doom. 11 is tanky. Him. He's incredibly tanky, but the Sunray with that percentage-based damage under the spear. There's a final Cold Embrace here. DUI saving the day yet again, while the Phoenix Dragon Tail stunned. The rain drops not enough. Didn't get his wand off. Oh, Collapse just still battling with in. old 11. The Doom goes in for round five. Oh, that was a good curse just to buy a bit more time, but the regeneration from Oracle Alti kicked in. 
Uh, they need to be aware of that. Maybe a better curse would be on top of Oracle, then uh, kill him, and then manage to kill the last truck after that. But, uh, you know, first Doom usage, uh, they get something out of it. Now he was working towards the BKB. Another Chronosphere is back up online. Javelin into Maelstrom. Pretty standard build on Faceless Void. He also finds the Possessed Mass, so that's going to keep him nice and healthy inside the jungle. Doesn't have to bring any extra regeneration. The perfect neutral item, yeah. Spectre has one too. Echo Saber also done. Looks like heading into that Manta and potentially Diffusal Blade later on for the Spectre. We'll see what she decides. Yeah, I love Diffusal Blade, especially against Wyvern, where you have extra slow, extra things to set up. And if someone is put under Cold Embrace, you burn their mana. So you, you have to think about that. It might sound stupid, but uh, so far in this tournament, Wyvern seemed like uh, one of the strongest picks mm -hmm. for sure, especially when you decide to max it out. The talent before you walk it on top of it. Arena. Catch the void. Another horn comes in. The burst damage. That purifying flames. I mean, last track TP'd in there, but it didn't feel like he was really necessary. They had, they had all the tools at their disposal to bring Poyo down. Yeah, last track did absolutely nothing there. It was all down to that Mars and the Oracle setting up beautifully for a haunt. Does uh, Diffusal Blade doesn't do damage into Cold Embrace, right? It's physical damage. Yeah, just but you the still mana. burn mana. Okay, just making sure. Toronto, Tokyo, good damage onto that tier one. Diamond Ball Edict, of course, so handy. When you get into these little hidey hole spots, as a blink away from collapse allows them to clear a camp and disengage from old 11. Or this time around, decided to max out Breathe Fire, four points in it. Hmm. Most of the offlane Dragonites tend to put more points in the Dragon Tail, lower the cooldown on it. Radiant are scanning. But since it's a mid Dragonite, maybe a bit more damage to have AOE I guess damage, also... clear the creep waves, and stay on top of the network. I, I believe that's the case. Uh, I, I think so, yeah. First thought for me was he wants to clear out creep waves faster, right? To shove the waves against the last track, who has such great ability to clear. Oh, in this. Running out, couple of seconds. He stuns up the Doom. Does he realize how many heroes are around him, though? He's going to get caught out. The false promise, the saves arriving from Miploshka. Who kisses, landing onto the left track, but they chase down old Levin. Just a bit more damage to finish him off. They see the Scorched Earth, and they should find him here, but he's ducked into the trees. He's old out. Levin, he's speedy. He escapes while a curse inside the arena. And Ori, saved up by the Cold Embrace once more. Team Spirit, they respond. Good reactions, they save the last track. And they also force quite a number of ultimates from Vichy Gaming, don't they? Yeah, Miposhka is, I think, um, great at positioning whenever he's playing a saving hero. And so far, it has uh, worked out great. Not just that, he's in, involved in eight kills. Is that correct? Out of six? Very nice. How's that possible? Oh, a great oh, spear back from Collapse. Straight into that splitter. Take down the DK, and with a catapult here, they could finish off this tier one at long last. Wait, did, well, what happened? Well, how did how did Miposhka have one zero and seven score with only six kills deny? on the board? So the deny count as an assist, or maybe, maybe, or a kill? maybe that's a kill. Yeah, he got a kill. <laughs> he got a kill. So from now on, I want to play against Venomancer every single game to be able to. Yeah, exactly. I, I want to improve my stats, get more kills, <laughs> deny allies. So every time your pub mate's like, your KDA is 072, no impact. Because you're not dying enough. Like, go play like, near the Venomancer. <laughs> Let me deny you so I can get some kills then. Goodness. I am a having a great game then, isn't he? Yeah, 107 with a 7 to 4 score line. 8 out of 7. Beautiful fraction. Also, love the fact that Mimposhka carries the salve around. Something that's super important. Very if, important. If you're playing Oracle, you need at least one, if not four, five, six salves. You put the salve on the false promise target, you're healing him up. Super, super regen. If you can find the trusty shovel, oh. definitely the best item. My favorite. You have Oracle in the team, just the free healing salves, which will be used throughout the whole game. That's perfect. Good D ward from DY. Oh, actually. JK, he's going to have to fly away. Doesn't get the D-Ward out there. Favors his own life over killing off the vision. That will mean Team Spirit do keep it up and running for now at least. A dead even game coming into 20 minutes. Sure, the Doom is right up at the top, but not how much of an overall gap there between VG Gaming and Team Spirit right now. Do you have fears about the Spectre getting too big? 
Not necessarily. I've seen Dooms taking over the game so many times, I feel very comfortable. You have Dragonite who scales nicely, you have Faceless Void once he gets uh, his items. Uh, gonna feel good, you have Curse to reset the fights. They have so much scaling on their side. I wanna see Snapfire being uh, able... Oh, look at bottom. Ah, they jump Mira. Cookie into DK. Phoenix not standing a chance there, no defensive way. items, has the Veil. Couple of raindrop charges, nowhere near enough to survive. Philosopher's Stone grabbed up by Mira as well now, so that, that shard into Aghanim Scepter. Will come reasonably soon. Do you like this kind of this kind of Phoenix build here? Veil into Shard into Ag Scepter. Oh, hang on a second, they've doomed up the Mars. Meposhka is just behind collapse here. That's the first promise ready, but he just falls into him. And you're right, the Chrono lands for the six splitter. Predicting the move, Meposhka's still gonna get picked off by Play. Uh, Hold 11, slamming him with the Infernal Blade, but they've kept collapse alive. Kisses come in, but Toronto Tokyo is broken DY and the Arena Spear there. All thanks to Meposhka's sacrifice. Find the faceless boy, burst him down, and a beautiful fight from Team Spirit. Oracle did buy back with this, but the Horn Jump catches out the Snapfire. That split hurt from last track, actually, what's uh, keeping them in Beautiful. this game. Buys a bit more time, they can't focus the Mars. Another uh, good save coming out from Mikoshka, and they're gonna go inside the pit. The Spectre still doesn't have Manta style, uh, only Yasha has enough money to buy ulti orb, but the damage coming out from the last track uh, should be enough. Right now, they know that there is no Chronosphere, can go inside the pit. Roche already half HP, a lot of healing coming out from the Phoenix. And yeah, he didn't have to use false promise there. I mean, Poshka was very patient, held on. I want to give this first Aegis to Toronto Tokyo. Like, second one should belong to Spectre, yeah. but Spectre doesn't feel uh, killable at the moment. So yeah, he will be the one picking it up. Well, that's because what, Lash is going to be the frontliner hitting yes. towers, right? Yeah, he wants to go in. He deals the most damage right now. So if you respawn with full HP, full mana, like you, let's say they expend either a Doom or Chronosphere to kill you, you're good to go. Something yeah. that I've seen uh, Poyoyo does on his Faceless Void is get stats. Like get stats instead of the time dilation. Uh, also keep Chronosphere at level one mm -hmm. until he gets like level three and starts getting more points in time dilation after level 20. Okay. Just becomes more tanky. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, especially with that strength talent, HP talent. And that time walk, just get a tanky you can against the Lash. We've already seen him struggle when he gets speared inside an arena as a the focus, that target acquisition from Team Spirit, it is instant. They see the Void, they kill the Void, he doesn't have any opportunity to react. I like Snapfire as a response to Mars, where you get pinned to the walls of the arena and then Cookie mm. like takes you away from it, which is really nice, you're not taking any damage. Yeah, they need that Cookie Cold Embrace combo. And Collapse and Toronto Tokyo move up to top. Radiant Won't be able to find anybody. Rio has already maneuvered himself into that mid lane. Seeing Snapfire there, buying a mech after the medallion. So not going to go finish off the Solar Crest, instead offering up some burst healing. As they smoke down to the southern portion of the map. Complete mirror movement here from both squads, aiming for the tier 2 towers on opposing sides. Quite simple for Toronto Tokyo though here. Edict up, he's got plenty of heroes behind him. DY will now show his presence in that top lane. And a glyph there scares the last track away. Feels like Vici Gaming don't necessarily want to fight into Aegis though, but waiting it out also gives so much room to Spirit. So it's nice to see them spreading the map pretty wide and keeping the farm rate going while, while Spirit are clumped. They're all grouped top lane. I don't think they feel comfortable playing into Aegis, so for the next uh, few minutes we'll just maybe try to get a pick off. They already used one smoke, just waiting for the next uh, set of items on them. Uh, interesting build by Doom, I like it. Uh, Aghanim Scepter, just a casual plate mail to, you know, have some extra defense against Lashrex Edict, a ton of physical damage coming up with Mars and Spectre. So the Ag is, the Ag is a break, yeah. Break the Spectre. But you need someone else to jump the Oracle. Like, they need to be able to get on top of Oracle. Good spear oh, back. Initiation again. EYW cookies the DK. The Doom comes out. There's a Supernova, though, with a Sunray. Healing up Collapse. The Kiss is landing. Some lava globules destroying the Mars. As Toronto Tokyo has got him pretty wild there. Aegis reclaimed. They do go on fall with Chrono for Poly though, onto three of them. Miposhka, he walks into the bubble, they can't heal him up, but the man now, now the false promise comes in time. Clutch move from Miposhka, saves the Spectre, all they'll lose is the Mars. 
Yeah, I, I don't think uh, you go on last track with the Doom. If you can surprise him, stun him before... Oh, they go Maybe in one, now. one more time. They do have a TD still on point over here, but he doesn't want to jump forward. Winter's Curse in the back lines is already what? slain by Yatura Spectre. Phoenix is just ignoring him. They don't get a kill, and Oracle can now wand himself up to half HP again. All 11 call embrace for the magic burst. Toronto, Tokyo dominating. Oh, he's still chasing. He wants DUI. He wants DUI real bad. He's got Split Earth ready. Lightning Storm set it up for him. And again, that Pulse Nova just shredding through these Vici Gaming heroes. That was a weird interaction, Gary, because Phoenix was using Sunray and completely ignored the Winter's Curse that yeah, was placed. Going. Like, he just keeps on going. Like, I don't give a damn. I don't think it would make uh, too much of a difference, but uh, yeah, something to be aware of for the next uh, couple of fights. Also, you do not want to doom a last rack who already got his spells off. If he has Pulse Nova running, you doom him. He's still going to be able to deal damage. So yeah. you need to either initiate on him straight away when there are no abilities. And we talked about how important it is to have any kind of damage that goes to the Cold Embrace. Last rack is the best damage. You have Lightning Storm maxed out, Split or er, Pulse Nova, uh, level 1 only. Cause, oh, um, the uh, Lotus timing, man. Collapse real quick. Stop out of this. Yeah. Level 1 Pulse Nova. Because it consumes too much mana. Like, your mana pool is still a bit limited. So he's going to get it uh, later on. That ah, makes sense. Yeah, doubles the mana cost there. Yeah, also, and the fact that Vici game another fight where they used every ultimate. I didn't really get too much out of it. More and more room for the Spectre to build up her net worth. Less rack up at the top as well, of course. Doombringer, uh, one here at VG Gaming that's keeping them really in contention in terms of overall net worth. And that was their battle into Aegis, though, so another opportunity when they've got that full arsenal of abilities once they've got all the green lights going for Vici Gaming. Go for round two, this time with no Aegis, and things could go the other way quite easily. Especially if you get these chronos on the oracle, right? I mean, that's what Poyo's hunting for, isn't it? Make sure he catches one core plus one oracle. And that's the perfect fight for the Faceless Void. And Posco's positioning has to be yeah, real, real prime stuff as he's going for a blink dagger as his first item. Something so far, he's been pretty impressive with the positioning, only dying once. It comes down to also having a good front line. You have Spectre causing the confusion. You have Mars that goes in. This Lord Orb, a lot of value against the Curse, against the Doom. You can put it on Spectre, so you know that like that hero is not going to get, get Cursed, not going to get Doomed, uh, and also great against Time Dilation. Just the spell mechanic is insanely valuable. Man, because that fight happened and lost, Vici Gaming weren't able to take the Tier 2. So they're now in a situation where Team Spirit control that top third of the map, getting the outpost away from them. And that's also controlling up Roshan for their next respawn in about a minute and a half, potentially. And that's why we see Vici Gaming all gathering bottom lane. They, they really want that tier two tower so they can take out the enemy outpost. Faceless Void not going for SNY build. I believe this is the first Faceless Void so far that I've seen in the last uh, couple of months, not even trying to go for the item. Against the stuns, against the root mechanics, Mars Spear, like, you definitely want to get it. Yeah, you need some kind of status resistance for sure. That's quite interesting, yeah, going, going straight me on there. Maybe he thinks more damage is needed inside a Chronosphere. So that attack speed will mean more time lock procs, more Maelstrom slash Mjolnir procs. I guess there's a lot of spill damage as well, right? Spectre with Dispersion, Pulse Nova, Edict, Fiery Spirit, Supernova. There's lots of yeah. uncontrollable damage from Spirit, so a stack charge with that lightning bounce could get some serious value. Very, very curious choice though, yeah, you're right, from Vici Gaming there. Yeah, pays off. Sure feels like Vici Gaming wants to smoke and wants to utilize these ultis to try and get a fight. 30 seconds for Fastborn and Roshan again, that, that next real point of contest from both teams. Being guarded so very well by Team Spirit. Mars is on that top lane pushing out. Opening up this beautiful bit of vacuum on the map. Radiant Triangle plus that top jungle area from outpost to left side all belongs to Spirit. Just because of what Collapse is doing right now. Hiding in the trees, pushing out that wave, not giving an opportunity for anyone to kill him. 
but just shoving. Yeah, throws a spear, God's Rebuke, Blink, run back in the trees, and Vici Gaming, they've got to come back and defend this. Vici might need to set up a Tinker Ward at the top part of the map to see this type of movement coming out from the Mars, now going good towards the BKB. Needs only recipe, but for now, seems like he's just uh, keeping the buy back in case they decide to take the Roshan fight, which will respawn in two minutes. Aghanim Scepter on Doom done, so break against Spectre. I, I think you need to go on Spectre with, with the next Doom. If you can get a good jump, possibly find the Oracle in the back lines, one stun, one Dragonite stun will get him killed, and then break Spectre. Spectre just straight up dies. She's not tanky at all once you remove that dispersion. Yeah, it's kind of a situation for Miposhka where in his head he'll be thinking, I want to false promise the Lash Rack like nine times out of ten. Do you want to false promise the Spectre in that case if she gets doomed? If she gets doomed, uh, most likely yes. Because Lash Rack uh, deals still more damage than Spectre in the fights when, whenever he goes in with the Shiva's Guard, with that Kaya Sanj amplifying the damage. Uh, I, I like the pairing. I always talked about how Lash Rack was. Oracle is a great character. You gotta prioritize oh uh, my bomb promise on him. There's the BKB. So good with those luck swords and the egg inside the chronosphere. Oh, they don't have a way to defend it. Poyo is gonna hammer down onto Mira while on the bottom side of the fight. Kalam's forced back by the kisses and Ori's DK. Yatsura on a mega kill streak though. And he does bring down D1. BG Gaming spend all of their ultimates. They get a two-for-one trade, they reset, but it still feels like Team Spirit in control of this part of the map. Yeah, I think Team Spirit just goes inside a pit right now and uh, force a Roshan fight, because Mars still has buyback. They expended uh, one on DY, and I believe uh, Mira also bought back on Phoenix. So you know that they have no ulties, no dragon form. Double damage is picked up by a Dragonite, so this tier two tower seems like it's gonna fall. Yeah, they'll Radiant finally claim it. DD Dragon Knight has his Aghanim Scepter, so he has that Black Dragon form now as well. Incredibly powerful. Roche will respawn in 10 seconds. Mira scouting things out inside the pit. He'll be able to spot Radiant it out. Just don't move, Mira. Stay inside the pit. Top tower there you go. Attack. Good job. Scan from Vichy Gain and connects at the exact right time as well. Dyer knows something's up and they will have to start traversing across that map, try and migrate through the river and defend this because giving Roshan, giving Aegis Cheese Shard, a team spirit right now. I don't think they can like take a the fight. Loss. Without the ulties, you check the right top corner, only one green light available, and that's one on Vyvern. So Cheese Aegis plus a shard picked up. Who do they give shard to? I don't see... Anyone using it right now? Not too sure, Phoenix man. bought one for himself. Doesn't this mean, though, that Vici Gaming just relinquished control for the next five minutes? Team Spirit, if they stick together, they can keep these lanes pushed down. Like, what does Vici Gaming do? Defend high ground? Do they, do they smoke to look for a fight? They might need to play a bit uh, slowly. Wait until this Aegis is gone. Like still 2k waves. gold lead, yeah, because you feel safe uh, with the Doom. He's still gonna get the ton of items going into Shiva's Guard next. Uh, just hit level 20, extra 30 DPS on Doom. He is a bit of a hoover, though. Sucking up all that farm and Void and DK starting to lag behind their counterparts a little bit. And I guess the same can be said for Lash and Spectre compared to this Mars. Collapse. After his Lotus Sword hasn't had too much progression. Have to deal with that bottom lane. Clear it out. And that allows VG Gaming to reclaim their outpost at long last. You know, long time coming. We actually control both of them for now. I think Last Rank will realize that he wants to be able to grab it with the rest of his squad. Yeah, Spectre's coming across there as well. Radiant Oscar. Boyo Yo, after finishing Mjolnir, going back into SNY. It's just too good item uh, to skip on. You were right. And that Mjolnir gave him enough attack speed to be able to kill the egg during this last Chronosphere. That's true. She was guard done on Doom. Oh, we're getting into this late game scenario already. Like 30 minutes in, Doom has 20,000 net worth. We do have that Aghanim Scepter on the Phoenix there, but yeah, Doom bring up Shivers on top of Ags. Going for the Tome next, so he's trying to rush to level 25. Got that Infernal Blade damage. So good. Against these tanky heroes, I like to build up stats such as Spectre. I love the build on Lash Rack. This game understands that BKB is not needed at all. 
they have Chrono, they have Winter's Curse, they have Doom, so really no point in building it. Get some status resistance from Kai and Sun. Get some more armor from Shiva's Guard and now going into Bloodstone. Does he what like what I, uh, Bloodstone, I, yeah, yeah, he he disassembled things, which uh, I was uh, about to say getting uh, both Bloodstone and Kaya Sanj, like they the spell amplification uh, doesn't stack, hmm. so it's better to disassemble the item. What does he do with the Sanj now? Like Halberd for Lashrax feels a bit weird. Does he go does he buy Sanj and Yasha now or do you just keep it and Sanj? Sanj and Yasha? No. <laughs> <laughs> no way. He might he might, he might just keep uh, casual Sanj. Okay, fair enough. Let's see what he gets going with it. Uh, his old 11. Devours a creep and blinks away, but collapses on his tail. Forces the BKB out of old 11. Nothing to go through it, so he does TP home successfully. Yeah, Thoro could have possibly used the haunt and pray the Lord Gaben for a skull bash, but Dyer's didn't happen. It's a bit too unreliable to waste 140 second cooldown Dyer's ulti. Too much of a risk. I would, I would have probably go for it. <laughs> I'll get him. I'll first hit bash him. That's all the cost style. Oh, very easy tier one take, but Vici Gaming are looking to mount a defense of their Dyer's tier two. It's three hits pretty much. If you count in the double hit from the Echo Saber straight away and you get like one extra hit during the TP, maybe even two. That's true. So yeah, I think uh, 100% bash chance right there. Oh, boy, Gets a stack charge on him, thanks to this DK stun, they move on to Toronto, Tokyo, and beautiful BKB allows him to keep fighting the Chrono there. Catching the Bosco, the Oracle again, the target they desire. Bashing onto Phoenix now, and Mirror's yes, blown up. up. EYW on a killing spree. Now move on towards the Spectre, who's doomed. Ori there with a splash damage, and three heroes slain so quickly. The fourth one of the game, Toronto, Tokyo, caught up between two massive dragons. The Wyvern and the DK. They'll try to TP out, they Curse the will curse. stop it. Collapse will slip away from danger, but the remainder of his team dead to right as Toronto Tokyo is caught here. It's not a chance of escape. Aegis down. And I only feel like the second life is going to be taken as well. Collapse. What's he up to? The Mars wants to save the Lash Rack here? I don't think he can. Like Dragonite is a bit too tanky. Faces Void now going in. With that Mjolnir on him, uh, so many frogs coming out from it. Uh, I'm pretty surprised. Like I, I said, uh, when they killed the first Roche, that first Roche belongs, the first Aegis belongs to Leshrac. The second one should go to Spectre, and uh, they didn't do it. They they put the uh, Aegis on Leshrac, which I think is a pretty bad move, considering that there is a Doom with the Aghanim Scepter, Doom Jump Spectre, instant the Doomser can't really do much in a fight, and then Leshrac. Like that, not the greatest fight. Also, great Chronosphere. He was so quick uh, on the fingers using a BKB while Spear was already flying, yeah. and then lands a Chrono on two heroes. There is still G's available. Spectre is the one holding it. Now drops it for Leshrac. And really, is just that ideal Chrono scenario, right? It's the Oracle plus one core hero. They do get a good Spear in the mid lane. Poyo burst down to within an inch of his life, but the BKB cookie keeps him. Relatively unscathed in the end. And Vici Gaming proving that their teamfight execution, you know, it can be top notch. Poyo with some really good chronospheres here, knowing that his target is going to be that Oracle every single time. Looking at Poyo's talent tree, went for strength talent, uh, 55 time lock damage, and also attack speed. He just wants to be able to kill heroes during the chronos here. Heroes are extremely tanky at this point, and he also like put more points in the stats early on we see that time dilation right now is level 3. So maybe that's why he thinks, well, I don't need the HP talent, I'll just put some stats and get more damage from my oh, other talents. That backstab! That should be illegal! BRW and Ori slaughter the Oracle. At the very least, the rest of Team Spirit will be able to get away from that top lane. But a, a, quite of a nifty little lane ward there, top, isn't it? Is that just on top of the ramp above yeah, the river? You don't see that too often. Out, outside of the laning stage anyway, so nice little spot there. Yeah, it's the one ward that uh, doesn't get divorted usually because you want like Radiant you usually stops. think it's on the stops. high ground the uh, sentry doesn't reach and now they are gonna go for tier one tower 37 minutes in tier four items starting to drop spell prism leveler Radiant's top tower has fallen. four team spirit and on the other side trickster cloak I'm also an illusionist cape there as well but do you feel like that team fight is a, is a sign Radiant's of things to come? With Vici attack. Gaming dooming the Spectre, chronoing the Oracle. Yeah, that, that's the plan. That, that, like, I mean, even if there's a Lotus Orb on Spectre, I think Doom will still pop it on yeah. her. 
Use a BKB, use Shiva's Guard, pop the Doom, and now going into Shard and Refresher. This is why, like, Panel talked about it and uh, seen so many games where Doom takes over. He's top of the network, Gary. He's a 22k network. 37 minutes in, has that Trickster Cloak, so that's gonna give him some magic resistance, gonna give them give him that invisibility so he can find the back lines possibly. Stormcrafter found not the best Titan, like it's good mm. when you need to dispel things. So if, if that was the plan from Vichy Gaming to, to have a fight identical to the previous one, how does Team Spirit disrupt that? How do you stop Vichy Gaming from chronoing your Oracle, from dooming your Spectre, and killing off your Phoenix with just a few hits of the that's a good question, Gary. Now they have a Phoenix with the Aghanim Scepter, so it's not gonna be that easy to kill the Egg, and he could also potentially save the heroes with it. Oh, you need to point. be careful, though. Like, if they focus you down with Lil Shredder, Faceless Void has a ton of attack speed. Scotty, now done. Going into Shard next. Like, even Dragonite right now has a ton of attack speed. With that casual Hyperstone, which will be turned into AC. He's hitting real hard and real fast. Ori, I don't know how they're gonna kill him. They need Sunray, maybe even two Sunrays to bring him down. He needs to be isolated with Satanic. It's pretty much like having two lives, so that's a thousand effective HP on him right now. Yeah, it might even be more. You know, it's a long spawn on Roshan, but that's something the Vichy Gaming are gonna be eyeing up because they'll feel that with the tempo set by themselves, it belongs to them. Need to claim that territory though, as yeah, dewarding required. Triple Observer Ward's coming out of Team Spirit all around the Roche Pit. You can see how important it is to them to really control this zone of the map. Doom, he found. He actually gives away Timeless Relic. I, I think he's just gonna be using both uh, both of these. Smoke himself with the Ninja Gear and then use uh, Timeless Relic because Timeless Relic is too oh, good. Oh, look who they found! Don't even need to use the Chrono for it. They're holding into this though, Team Spirit. Open over Sunray. Poyo time walks away. Here I tell you, saved by the curse. That's well, a great reset. To Tokyo resets the fight beautifully. And Poyo just time walking out of the grasp of Yasuro. Old 11 still has the jump catch with the DK stun. And they'll find the last track with a kisses landing. Sure, you've cheesed up. And he's got a bloodstone and a false promise. Though. Come back from the Oracle, saves them as a defensive Krona. Yeah, Poyo, Poyo. Yo. Forced to use a defensive Krona there. Uh, he got chased by a Spectre. Phoenix uses the egg. Faceless Void was thinking twice about going in. Gets a couple of hits in, and then he's like, wow, they, they have a basher. I can't do it alone. I'm too afraid because I'm alone. There's no team to back me up. But to go back to the Timeless Relic talk for the Doom, he... He didn't use it. He didn't use it. Like He has a Vor Stomp, which is two-second hero duration stun. That's 2.5 now with the Timeless attack. Relic. And also your Infernal Blade is longer duration stun. Once you pick up that... Uh, Shard, it also goes from uh, 0 0.6 to 1.2, and then 20% on top of that. That's uh, 1.5 seconds done. It's a lot of numbers for breakfast, Lacoste. It is, it is. I'm right, probably doing it meal. wrong, hope no one notices. <laughs> I'd also round numbers up. Rounding up's always the best way to go. It makes things look bigger. EYW, Ori and Poyo gathering up again around the Roshan pit. And honestly, all things considered there, you know, I think Oracle bought back in that, just a single buyback, I believe, from Team Spirit to defend yes. that area. And you've spent you know, the Chrono, the Curse, everything apart from the Doom. But with Roshan being such a long respawn, now coming up in just a second or two, VG Gaming should have the majority of their spells back again. Yeah, right now they're scouting things out. With that Illusion Escape inside the pit, uh, what is it? It's Cheese Ages plus Aghanim Scepter. Nice. That's a really nice one. Faceless Void would definitely love to pick it up. Last track, full That's sight nice. on, on him. Uh, he needs 300 gold to have buyback. He was waiting. He was sitting at uh, 7,000 plus gold. Yeah, making that, that last item decision very difficult here for the Lash. You could have thought of an Eon Disc, for example, or something to just to stay alive, but they want that catch and kill capability instead. If they hex up the Faceless Void, they could blow up Poyo quite easily with their burst Radiant's damage. They could. They have enough damage. Attack. And Roshan being alive means Team Just Spirit. Alive. They pop into the pit. Toronto Tokyo started off. Chrono in 25. They don't have it just yet, but Poyo is being juked around and hex. All the chase does to come in. Poyo, the cold embrace in the cookie. Saves the faithful boy. Vichy Gaming are able to keep him alive. And the DK. And he's got his big and he's going. They can hit it. Ryan puts it down. The egg is destroyed. 
scrambled eggs for Mira there and buys back on the Phoenix. But in come the kisses and old 11 has secured the kill on the Spectre. Dead for a minute and a half and VG Gaming running rampant now through the team fight. Spearing Illusion collapses, unable to save Toronto Tokyo. Boyo kept up and running by the cold embrace. Time off rewind. A dive from the Phoenix and a now the coming the in. Boyo has it ready at long last. Time off the rest of the damage off. And VG Gaming with a stunning team fight. Pretty much the perfect execution there from Vici Gaming. Uh, Faces Void jumps in, they thought they could burst in. Here comes uh, the Cold Embrace from the Winter Rider on the top. Cold Lock in, pretty much killing him with almost uh, full HP. And now he's gonna be the one picking up that Aghanim Scepter with the Reverse Time Walk, with the Time Walk applying um, Ashes. It's, it's just gonna be too much stuff. And we can yeah. see like Dragonite not even being. Uh, Contested at all in a team fight. He's level 26. He has that. Uh, I've seen uh, Dragonite taking the other talent uh, in one of the games. I was very surprised because AOE Dragon Tail stun during the form uh, just feels so good. Especially against the Spectre, right? Just like stun all the illusions, stun all the haunt Spectres, catch out whoever's nearby. Yeah, th th this might be the game. I, I just don't feel that the Team Spirit has enough damage. That they're gonna go for the throne. They're gonna end this game right here, right now. Fuel tank empty. Check engine light is on for Team Spirit, because Vici Gaming starting to drive this one home. Tier 4's crumbling. A buying back from Toronto, Tokyo, though, should give them some semblance of control around their Tier 4's. Avicii Gaming, they're an experienced team. They, like, instantly go back when one buyback is used. Uh, they go for the barracks, they go for the second set of barracks. Their decision-making in the late game has been on point during the Season 2. Let's see it, what they can do to this Dragon Knight. Oh, a spear couple. Good job, Mario. Dragon Knight being pummeled here, but the Witness Curse on to collapse means that Vici Gaming once again able to reset, launch the kisses forward. Look at that, Lava landing onto the ledge. Collapse has to buy back to Toronto, Tokyo. Has a bit of a save behind it. False promise on the heels landing. EYW comes down to the arena, and a cold embrace there onto Ori. Make sure everything's fine. Respawn up. Faceless Void, stunned down to that respawn. And a hot forward, Yatoro wants to keep chasing in. A good spear again, but the cold embrace so powerful. Allows Old 11 to rejoin the battle. Doom of the Spectre. Audio rewalk into the fight and clear them up one by one. No more Lash, no more Spectre, and it is GG. Game over with Old 11 getting an ultra kill to close it out. Yeah, once Old 11 shows up with the full toolkit in that fight, the double refresher, double doom being used. It